Hi folks, unfortunately California has apparently outlawed toothpicks because Tom Lipton put up a public service announcement and a print. We all have to make toothpicks for Tom. This is our test piece out of aluminum. Uh, aluminum to me here was the easy material. We're gonna then try it with some plastic. So we're gonna show how we model this thing in Fusion 360. Actually threw me for a little bit of a curveball at first. Then we're gonna show how we machine it. Now, the footage is gonna be on the UMC 750, but the reality is like so many things in modern manufacturing and CNC machining, the stuff that matters happens in the software. And Fusion 360 actually has a tool path that is kind of new that makes this a fairly easy part to handle. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, let's model up the Oxtools Renzetti toothpick challenge, starting with the 0.078 inch body of the toothpick. S on your keyboard, center, rectangle. Sketch it on the XY plane. 0.078 and 0.078. S fill it, FIL. I can then do my fillets of 10 thou. Holding down control will let you continue to click additional edges and finish sketch. We all know they aren't really optional. S, extrude, click on our face and we will do the 2.56 inch length divided by two because we're doing a symmetric extrude. Click OK. Turn my origin back on, P for project, project on this plane. I'm just gonna project the two points. I can now turn off the body, L for line. I'm gonna sketch a construction line, S point, and snap a midpoint there. What we're gonna do is first sketch this 10 thousandths of an inch flat, and then we'll do the 12 degree angle. L for line, 0 0.05. If I hover over that, it's D6, L for line, come down. D6, L for line. I'm going to sketch a line up here and come back and close off that sketch. Sketch a horizontal construction line and dimension the angle between these two as six degrees. I can now turn my body back on and because I've left the top edge unconstrained I can actually just sketch and drag it up. We need it to be tall enough such that when we revolve it it completes the cut. S R E V for revolve. We're going to revolve this profile around our construction line. Click OK. S M I R for mirror. We're going to mirror the feature of the revolve around the mirror plane of our origin XY. Click OK, and we can double check measuring from tip to tip. Two point five six. And the proportions and scale look generally correct, matching it to the drawing. My goal is to do it in one operation on the five axis. But we actually don't even need a five axis. This should actually work just fine on a fourth axis as well. And the trick is we're using the relatively new rotary toolpath in Fusion 360. If you don't have this, you need to go to your name, preferences, and enable it under preview features. Depending on when you're watching this, it may have been fully released, and you'll need to enable your extensions option. Rotary toolpath is simple. It allows fourth axis style work on non-cylindrical objects. So it's gonna rotate that tool around our toothpick, accounting for the taper and the curve 
the fillets, etc. And so what I love about this is you can see in the machining footage here, we are never compromising the structural integrity. We're using the one inch diameter. We tested it actually in aluminum. Now we're making it the actual one in Delrin and we're using that base material to give us the rigidity. It's that simple. There does seem to be a little bit of a bug in rotary right now. It took us a while to figure out how to get the operation to start at the top and move toward the fifth axis base. We figured that out by switching some of our height planes, as you can see here. So if you're still struggling with that yourself, give that a try. Otherwise, it's a very easy tool path to program. But I really want to dial in the detail before we part this off. Now, we could have transitioned it over to a different fixture or maybe even thought about using our subspindle lathe, but hot glue, let's see if it'll work for us. Since we haven't finished machining the toothpick, it's still attached to our piece of Delrin, and adding the hot glue back is going to act as a temporary fixture to increase the rigidity and hold onto that toothpick for the most part when we go to do that final parting operation. The hot glue technique can work great for low volume or one-off prototypes like this project egress part where we tabbed it as a window machining method and I wanted to machine the tabs away in place. A big shout out to Tom Lifton for throwing this out there and for Tom and everybody else who has this wealth of knowledge that has helped making uh, this YouTube and Instagram machining world what it is. All of us are better off for guys like that. You know, Tom has an excellent book called Metalworking Sink or Swim that was uh, hugely influential on me before I even knew Tom. Uh, so again, Tom, thank you. You are a, a world of influence to many folks out there and uh, it's fun to take uh, part in some of these challenges. On that note, uh, we started a new monthly newsletter called Chip Rag, where amongst other things, talking about what's happening in the CNC machining uh, and manufacturing space, we're doing a little collaborations section because we're starting to do more collaborations and we want to make sure that when folks uh, announce one like this, we have the chance to make it aware. So sign up for that newsletter over at chiprag.com or on nyccnc.com. Otherwise, take care folks. See you soon.